My name is Jeremy Breck out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I'm very privileged to be here on behalf of Chauvet DJ. Uh, they're a very exciting company to partner with and be a part of because they do things like this. They create innovation for our industry. They make what I do as a lighting designer better, more efficient. Um, so it's a privilege for me to be here uh, to do these type of workshops or these seminars. You're not leaving already, are you? Oh, okay, I didn't think I was that bad yet. <laughs> Um, so a couple things actually I, I want to kind of you know scan the crowd and find out a little bit more um, takeaways from this uh, from this convention what what have you guys saw that you really enjoyed so far And where are, you, where are you out of? California. California, okay, great. Thanks for joining us here in Las Vegas. You guys probably came to a colder location. We came to a much warmer location where we're, where we're out of. So any takeaways, what what'd you, what'd you think so far? Or uh, the, the convention, tell us. Uh, it's been a great network. Learned a lot in the halls. Awesome, yeah. Nick, Nick Wall. I had to put my phone on silence. If you guys can put your phones on, on silence as well, that would be great. Uh, we'll come back to Nick. Um, take away can, uh, the conference. Yeah. And what uh, what products have you saw that that really have, have been uh, nuggets for you? Yeah. Do you know how to use them now? If you can make it to the uh, the afternoon workshop for the, the DMX, I don't know if you guys do DMX, it's going to be a great workshop. Definitely encourage you to, to come to those. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and the Show Express has taken what I do to a whole different level. So that's exactly, again, that's why Show Made DJ put this on because if you have their product and you don't know how to use it, you're not using it right, you're not getting the full potential out of it. So we want to make sure that you get that. Um, you know, one of the one of the things, uh, and I'm going to do do a little promotion here. Uh, the Freedom Series. Now, one of the things about the Freedom Series, if you haven't noticed, the show price is currently just ridiculous. Okay, and the reason I'm saying that is because you're going to pay for a DeFi receiver for $129 for the show price. You can get a battery powered. Imagine it without the DeFi in it. You can get a battery powered light or about $129. So you're basically getting the DeFi for you know free when you, when you think about it. Uh, and what you can do with the DeFi, allowing you to use it as a receiver, uh, gives you a lot of advantages. Um, you know, some of the things that I really enjoyed at the, at the seminars or at the uh, conference, like Tony said, it, it's in the halls, that's where the real education is at. Visiting with some of the people that you talk to online and that you meet and uh, you now have that opportunity to shake their hand uh, and just network is, is, is valuable. So uh, I appreciate the feedback. It, it's good to hear that stuff. So what I'm gonna talk to you guys about, can you guys hear okay? Yeah. Can you guys hear in the back okay? Yeah. You're good? All right. Uh, what I wanna talk to you about is protecting your investment. Um, when we come to these, these conferences, we look at gear, we look at, I wanna buy this, I wanna buy that, but if we're not taking care of those things, you're gonna come back the next year and say, oh, well that thing just, it, it broke within a year or the LEDs didn't last, or you know the lens just isn't as vibrant as it used to be. Um, so that's exactly what we want to portray, is making sure that you are getting the best bang for your buck by taking care of what you have. Um, I have a couple examples. Uh, actually, before I get into the examples, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a wedding, inter wedding entertainment director out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I'm the only one currently in the state of South Dakota. Um, and if you have questions on Wet Guild, I'd be happy to visit with you about that, but today's presentation is not about that. Um, one of the things that I also have is, um, if you've seen the YouTube videos that I've done, uh, the shop time videos. How to use equipment more efficiently. How to come up with creative ideas by using the equipment that you already have. Um, I just launched, which is on the Disc Jockey News website, the new video on how to get the fullest potential out of the glow totems. Okay, they're a great, great uh, structure 
but how do you use them besides just using them as a glow totem? So if you check out that on their website, you'll be able to see, <coughs> excuse me, you'll be able to see. Uh, did you? Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah, great. Is it not informative? I was about to buy Pipe and Drake, and you know, you just, you're saving it probably about a thousand bucks. There you go. Something so simple. Yeah. And that's what it's about. It's about using what you have and, and using it to its fullest potential. So thank you. I appreciate the feedback on that. Um, so I'm going to show you this missing video. Um, what this video was, I can't use their, their Wi-Fi is really weak in here, so the videos aren't working very well. Uh, but what this video was is, uh, have you seen the nationwide commercial where this guy has this huge baby in the parking lot and the cart's going towards his baby and he's, you know, he's blocking it, taking care of it? Basically, it, that baby is a portrayal of his car and that's what we as DJs look at is that investment that we make in our lighting and our sound equipment we need to make sure that we treat those things like babies we have to make sure that we protect it we take care of it in any possible way because if we want the longevity out of our equipment it all comes down to making sure that it's being taken care of so treat it like your baby so why do you need to keep your equipment in the best possible shape. Why protect your equipment? Well, first thing, it allows your equipment to look professional. <coughs> Excuse me. Can I grab a breath? Can you grab me water? <coughs> it allows your equipment to look professional. Um, one of my favorite moving heads is the white, three, thank you so much, the white Intimidator 350. And reason being is because I love the fact that it blends in with the white totems, okay? But if I do not protect that light, per, uh, if I do not protect that that light correctly, that light is going to look like garbage. It's going to look dirty. It's going to look terrible. So make sure you take care of your equipment. You don't want to break the lenses. You know, you know some uh, my old uh, my old park hands, uh, not park hands. I'm sorry, um, some bars. Uh, the lens would crack because I didn't take care of them correctly. So next thing you know, you take them to an event, you set them down on the floor, and now you got kids going over there, playing with them. You know, kids love bright, shiny things, so do DJs. They go over there, they start playing with it. Next thing you know, if they cut themselves on that plastic, again, making sure that the equipment is safe, making sure that it looks professional. The next thing, it makes you look professional. You don't want your equipment to bring down the face of your company. So make sure that you take care of it to look, make yourself look professional. Um, one of the things we're going to talk about as we go through this presentation is how do you take care of your equipment? What do you store them in? What do you uh, transport them in? Um, because that makes a huge difference as well. I can tell you the one thing I hate right now is there is not a case for the Nimbus. Am I correct? No, there's not. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm going to work on that for you, I promise, because I've been, I've been wanting to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the thing is, you walk into this elegant, beautiful facility with a Nimbus with your big cardboard box, okay? Um, so I, again, I mean, you do want to look professional when you go into a place because you don't want to be moving your moving heads in the original box that it came in. So we're going to show you some of the things that, uh, you know, are good investments to protect your investment and to make you look like a professional and to make that, that transfer of equipment from your van to your, uh, your facility a lot easier and a lot simple. So the reason, uh, 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 run properly, sorry, I jumped ahead of myself. Um, your equipment's going to basically, again, get the longevity, it's going to run properly. Moving heads, you wanna make sure that if you put your moving heads in bags, you wanna make sure that moving head is secure. Because if it's not, and all of a sudden it's in your vehicle jolting around, you break that moving head, you're gonna be at your event, and if you have two moving heads, now you're down to one moving head. So again, just make sure that you take care of it so the moving parts are protected and that it doesn't overheat uh, and so on. Resale, how many of you guys have equipment that you're always looking to get rid of, okay? You're trying to sell old equipment. Well, the nicer it looks, the better you're going to, you're gonna be able to resell that equipment. Uh, I know I have equipment that <laughs> I looked at it, I just threw it in the dumpster. I wasn't even gonna waste my time putting it on eBay or uh, the classifieds or anything like that just because I mean, I would've got $5 for it. It would've been more time just posting, trying to get rid of those that, that, that equipment. Another thing, um, I actually got a phone call yesterday. I, I don't know if you guys were in the workshops or the seminars yesterday, 
Uh, I got a call yesterday for some IP fixtures um, that they wanted today. Well, luckily I have a guy back in the office who's able to get those around. But when you're sending out rentals, again, you wanna make that equipment look professional because if they're renting that equipment, if a bridal, uh, bridal planner is renting that equipment, they wanna provide that professional looking equipment to their client. So it also makes that other individual look professional as well. If you have cases to put them in, again, the last thing you wanna do is say, here, here's a big cardboard box. This is what you rented, there you go. Uh, longevity for your gear, we kind of talked about that already, just making sure that you get the full potential out of your gear. How to keep the lenses clean. So some of the things you can do for your, for your lenses, um, because the optics is very, very important when it comes to moving heads, when it comes to uh, a lot of your fixtures that are out there, um, you can use dry compressed air, uh, use mild soap solutions, ammonia-free glass cleaner. And the reason you want to use ammonia-free is because if you use anything with an, an ammonia base, it will put smears on there and it will start deteriorating your lens. So, or not deteriorating, but it'll start clouding up your lens. So make sure you use an ammonia-free uh, rubbing alcohol and then also a lens static-free cloth. Um, you can actually get the lens static-free cloths. You can get those in camera shops. Uh, to help keep those lenses clean. That's what they use for cameras. So when they're taking pictures, they don't have lint or dirt or anything on the lens, so. <coughs> Excuse me. So keep those things in mind. Um, how to keep moving parts clean. Do not use air in a can, because air in a can has moisture in it. The last thing you wanna do is you, will, you do not wanna put moisture inside of uh, your moving parts because now you're basically creating that rust factor, okay? You're gonna cause crea or, um, corrosion. Uh, don't use paper towels because now you're putting lint, you're putting uh, paper material in those moving parts. If you have gears, it can bind up your gears, it can cause problems, and will break down your equipment. <laughs> use proper storage and use proper cases. The reason that's important is again, like we said, when you're transporting things, you wanna make sure that it is completely safe, so that way those gears and those movement parts aren't going to break, they're not going to have issues. Keep your fixtures up to par, keeping your fixtures white, keeping your white fixtures white. And that's one thing that we talked about, by keeping them in cases, it'll keep them from getting dirty. Um, one thing I would recommend is maybe taking some type of cleaning solution just to kind of keep them clean when you get to an event. Um, you don't have to do it every single event, I'm gonna guarantee every single event that you do, you're not gonna have to clean it, but it's nice to have that cleaning solution so that way you have the capabilities to clean it if you need to. Um, one thing that works well is, uh, for like the, uh, the 350 whites, one thing that works well is uh, the like armor roll. Just using the, uh, the interior cleaner for a car, just use that, take a cloth, wipe it off, and it makes them look like new every time you're out there. Yes? Yeah, yep, yep, exactly. Yeah, yep. And tire shine. And when you're done, spray down your 20s. Make your wheels look good. Um, keep them scratch free. Again, that's why we use cases, because you don't want them to get all dinged up. You don't want them to get scratched up. Uh, just keep them nice and secure. And keep them safe from the elements. Um, I live in South Dakota. We have gravel roads. And I can tell you my van is not always airtight. So when I'm driving down the road and I have my windows down, I'm sorry, it's going with the song anyways. Um, <laughs> it, we get dust in the windows, we get dust in the vehicle. And again, just having them, having them in the case, having them secure, uh, it allows them to stay a little bit cleaner so I don't have to sit there and clean them every single time. <clears throat> what is the right case to transport your gear? First of all, the Freedom cases. Um, let's see, I know we have some around here. Okay, so in the back there, I think Mike, Mike's actually using, oh no, it's a chair, Never mind. sorry. Mike. Okay, um, Alan's gonna grab us a case. Uh, the case, what the charging case does for the Freedom is it charges the, it charges the fixtures. It also gives you, it's really, it's, it's actually well thought out. Um, there's actually room so you can have the light where the display is towards the top and all the cords and everything are down below. So you don't have to worry about the cords getting crushed or anything like that. Um, it's a nice secure case. And as you can see right here, 
you can actually stack the cases on top of each other. Thank you, Rick. So if you want to come take a look at this, you don't have to do it right now, but when you get a chance. Um, also on the side, when you're charging these, uh, they always recommend keep the case open when you're charging them because you don't want to cause any overheating or anything like that. Um, but you plug in a wall fixture, or you plug in the wall right to the side here, and then there's a little switch. You can turn it on and off. Uh, and again, it's really easy to use. And again, the nicest thing about them is you can stack the cases. Um, I wouldn't recommend stacking them more than three high. Uh, but again, the, uh, the road case is a, is a great case. Plus, again, it charges your fixtures for you. Um, how many of you have geysers? Anybody have geysers? OK. Um, this is actually an Odyssey case. I don't know if we have anything in our line. OK. So Odyssey makes a great case. And yep, it's a custom case to fit the geyser. Uh, we rent these out a lot. And I currently do not have the cases, so I'll be actually talking to Odyssey today. Uh, but these cases will allow your, your units to stay secure and also travel well. Uh, otherwise, right now, um, it's not a custom case, but I have one case that has two of them in it. Uh, it's heavy, but right now that's all I have. I'm still protecting my investment even though it's not the right case. If you don't have the right case, at least find something that will keep it secure, but they do make a case for it, uh, and that's a, it's a great unit to use. This is one of the best rolling bags I have found. This is the Chauvet DJ CHS50, and this bag will use your moving heads. It will fit, I'm not gonna say all moving heads, it will fit most moving heads, and again, it allows your moving head the, the moving parts allows it to stay secure. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I have the competitor, I'm not gonna name drop it, but I have the competitor bag, I actually did a video on it and compared the two. The zippers are amazing on this. The wheels, my other ones that I had, as soon as I pulled, and Matt will agree, <laughs> Matt has my old ones. Um, as soon as you pull this handle out, there's a couple issues that we have this right here always seems to get locked, so you can only pull the handle up about halfway. This one is a full telescoping, so you don't have any of the issues or any binding or anything. So this is a great handle. It's got side compartments here for all your cables. It's got a front bag, um, zipper bag right here. And then the fixture, you actually just open it up right here. That whole front panel lays down. You put your fixture in there, zip it back up, and it also has foam padding that's Velcro to the side to again protect that investment. The other issue I had with one of the other bags was there's actually just really small grommets. Um, no, rivets, I'm sorry, really small rivets. And as soon as you, <laughs> as soon as that bag moves across the ground, that front bar just snip, snaps right off. So this is a bag that I swear by. This is an amazing bag. Uh, if you have any moving heads, any large fixtures, this is, this is the bag that you need to get. The show special, is amazing and it's worth it. If you're gonna spend almost seven, eight hundred dollars on your on your moving head, why would you not spend another fifty-eight I think? It's it's a great price on these bags. The other thing, one of my favorites this year, the easy pins. The easy pins come with can I get that back? Al? Thank you, Alan. Um, the easy pins come with an amazing six piece bag and it allows you to carry that entire set. There's a charger inside the bag. So you plug all six of them in, you plug the IEC cord in there, and then the indicator shows you red if it's not charged, green if it's fully charged. Uh, I'm not gonna talk too much on the product because we talked a little, a little bit about those already uh, throughout this week. If you have questions on them, I'll be happy to answer them for you after this. Um, but the case itself, it's got a nice padded case to protect the gear, and it has two handles. You throw everything in there, and you head to your gig. Uh, these are they're a great product. To me, this is the best investment that you will make in 2014. Um, it's a great case. It has your, uh, your controller, your remote right here, which allows you to dim. That allows you to turn them on and off. And then also this will hold all of the gels that come with each light as well. So again, well done product. Um, product development on this started many, many, many months ago because they wanted to perfect this product to make sure that it was a good value and it was a perfect product for our industry. <laughs> so 
one of the things that you have the advantage of is the VIP program that, that, that Chauvet DJ has. Chauvet DJ Academy, if you're not familiar with it, go to ChauvetDJAcademy.com, correct? Yes. And by going to that website, you will actually have, there's educational things on there. I was, I was fortunate enough to be a part of some of those videos. Uh, and again, it's all about education. That's exactly why Chauvet paid the extra money to put this room together, is because they know that everybody here at this, at this conference is here for education. That's why they went above and beyond to make sure that you had extra education and great content. If you didn't have a chance, Mikey Mike in the back was here on Tuesday, did a phenomenal job on, um, excuse me, on uh, the Nimbus. Um, we had other great presenter, or presenters, did a phenomenal job. And again, uh, a big shout out to uh, Chauvet DJ, Beth and her team. They did a phenomenal job putting all this together. And I hope you guys took advantage of it. Uh, another thing you can take advantage of is the VIP program, is they have, and I'm sorry, it's very pixelated. They had copyrights on every single picture that I could find on this, so. I should have just asked you for it, I'm sorry. Um, this brochure, if, and I know we have some of these brochures, we'll have them available over in the back, um, back by the ED, IDJ Now uh, booth over there. Um, but this book is a great marketing material that they created for DJs. So you can sell your wedding, you can show them this is the potential. All you have to do is understand how to use those fixtures to their fullest potential to create amazing weddings. And you have the, you have the power to do that. And they can put your logo on there by using your VIP rewards. Uh, and it, again, it's just, it's, it's about making things simple for our industry. So they did a great job with that. Appreciate that. <laughs> so again, protecting your investment is the second best investment you're gonna make. The first is that investment in the fixture. Protecting it is going to be your second best investment. Uh, I, I do wanna kinda of open up the floor a little bit, answer some questions. Um, I know Alan is, Alan's here with uh, Chauvet DJ as well, and he's kind of the mastermind behind all these products that you see, the innovative products that Chauvet DJ has put together. So we wanna answer questions for you. Um, if you're looking for what kind of case should they use for this, it's exactly what we're here for. We want to make sure that your investment that you make is going to last as long as it possibly can. Um, I know some of the the Rain 56 uh, Chauvet, uh, Chauvet Rain 56 cans. It was their first one of their first LED cans that came out, and we still have 60 of them because they stand <laughs> they stand the test of time. Uh, and and again, we want to make sure that you guys protect your investments that you guys that you guys get. So questions, anybody, can I answer your questions? Yeah. Um, yes. Right. I actually, I don't know if it's live yet. Um, I'll have to check with Jeff. I have a video. There's actually a rolling case that I found. Oh good, and I got the bag, but I don't No, no, no. Um, I found a rolling case and I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I found it on eBay. And um, Nick, the uh, exciting gentleman that just walked in, um, he actually uses two Intimator duos underneath his speakers, on his speaker stands. And uh, I actually did a, a video, I'll make that, uh, you know what, I'll actually make it live here as soon as we're done. Um, and the link is on there and everything, the link for that case is on there. Uh, it's, it's, it's one case and actually when you get it, it's completely apart. It's, like eight different pieces. But if Mitch Taylor can put it together, you can put it together. To do a spotlight, I would recommend using a spot fixture. You, you don't want to use a beam fixture because a beam fixture, you're only going to spotlight their head, right. um, which could be really cool. But uh, the reason you don't want to use the like it would be a little lower in the bride. <laughs> <laughs> you get two two <laughs> beams right on the bride. Two beams oh. right on the bride, and they're all going to say, "What are you looking at?" Yeah, so, you know, I'm up here. Yes. Um, no, the the zooms, uh, the zoom wash. These are a wash fixture. So to shoot it across the room, will it give you a spot? Yes, but it's not going to be the type of spot that you're looking to do. Um, and that's again, that's why the 350 to me is a very popular fixture. The white, again, if it blends in with the low totem, it's it's a great a great investment. Um, their show special, well, I actually have that. 
the show special on the white 350s, regular $8.99, they have them on sale for $7.65. So you're looking at about 140 bucks off. Um, but yeah, I would recommend doing the spot. It, the nice thing about the spot, do you do you currently use Express? Yes. Okay, so Express is going to give you a lot of flexibility. Yeah, the generator. Yeah, you know, and you don't even have to use the generator. I, I have a, um, on my unit, his system, his system, um, we've actually built a button that says door spot. And when we get to that facility, we set up our moving heads in position, and then we hit door spot, we go into editor, and then I'll use this one to aim over there, and this one I'll use to aim over there. So I, every single time I go into a venue, we have to re-aim that right. door spot. We have to re-aim the cake. We have to re-aim. Well, that's, that's right. Yeah. That's right. yeah. Generator is going to create sequences. Yeah. So usually in generator, there's usually it usually has four points to it. So if you're using moving head, it's moving the x and y's, and it's creating you know it's hitting all those different channels, all those different numbers in that channel. Um, so for a door spot, like I said, just keep it simple, and just use the x uh, to to move wherever you need it to be. Are you following the <coughs> or just spotlighting? No, it's it's hard to follow them in with the moving head, and the reason being is because you have to, you almost have to practice that introduction. Exactly, yep. Yeah, you would have to do it live. I would just recommend, actually the LS75, the LFS75, um, if you wanna create a follow spot, that would make a great follow spot. Um, but if you're trying to do a follow spot with a moving head, you're gonna have to have a light tech sitting there trying to adjust the X and Ys or trying to use the mouse to, to drag it in the, um, what is that called? What's in the top left in, in editor? What is that called? The box. It's in the box. Yeah, there is no name for it. The top left box. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? I got more, but I'll let everybody else hear it. Go ahead. Um, for the the uh, Nimbus, if I might admit that, uh, mm -hmm. so great light. What kind of lighting do you want to Mike? Yeah, I'll have Mike come up here. I do, but when it comes to perfecting the cloud, <laughs> he's the master. But I, yeah, I can give you my. I'm trying to figure out the best way to colorize it. I mean, I tried doing it with the sides. Yeah. And that's what we have. But it doesn't seem to get very deep into the cloud. Yep. You want to talk about that, Mike? Sure. Uh, yeah. So, cloud, definitely want to project light on top of it because the cloud's going to block the light coming up. You'll get some breakthroughs from time to time, but better to wash from down from on top of the cloud than when trying to go from underneath. So what would you recommend for wash lights? Any, any wash light. Any wash light. Any wash light. Just get some kind of color pop on there, depending on the look that your client's asking for. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, white's really good, a really popular color to just make that cloud come alive. Right. Uh, gives you that depth and animation. But anytime you can color that relevant to the client's uh, color scheme, uh, it's real important. And another thing we do is like with the with the 350s, it actually has a triprism, so it's not such a bold um, a bold circle. Right. What the triprism will do is break it up a little bit. It also puts a nice little slow <coughs> movement and rotation on that triprism. Yeah, that's what, that was my next question. Yep. When you're using the spotlight on that dance area, breaking into the prism would also expand the area. So yeah. at least if they're moving around and not having to try to adjust the, yeah. right, the spot. Yeah. Give you a wide angle for you and also take it out of focus a little bit mm -hmm. kind of avoid those hard edges on soften the it up yeah okay. yeah and if you do that uh, like you said when you soften it up it'll just kind of create that wash effect by using a spot okay. um, the other nice thing that we or I guess you can kind of consider it nice if you want to but what we'll do is with the with the moving head is we'll just scan across the dance floor because again like you said you never know exactly where they're going to be right yeah. You don't really take the time to learn how to dance. It's like it's high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's basically, yeah. But there are some that get excited and you know, they start moving all over. Do some ballroom, yeah. Yeah. Um, and one thing that you have to keep in mind, too, is everybody, if your dance floor is here, if you're in the round, it actually works fine. It works well. If you are um, front stage and your dance floor is here and all the guests are over there, think about how you can put your, your moving heads so they aim into the dance floor as opposed to into the face of everybody. Yeah, 
So if you can go to the corner, if you can, yes. If you can, that will, that works the best. Or extreme size. Yep. Or extreme size. Yep. Okay. And, and remember that you're, you need to get a little bit of distance because your spotlight is going to be a, a beam angle, right? So it's going to kind of angle out. Right. So if you're super close, you're only going to get half of the client. Right. So you might, and if you talk for a video, you're going to get a nice blue bottom of their dress and black up here for pictures depending on the lens and so the smaller video. venue, what will be the right light? Because sometimes, they say you had a venue about this size. The widest beam angle, yeah. well, picture you can get. And again, that's what that triprism. If you if you use a triprism, typically I'm just gonna, you know, figure your circles about this big on just the regular open lens. Okay. Once you add that triprism, it's going to expand about three times the amount. Okay. I shouldn't say three times. About two thirds, because there's still a little bit. Of, sometimes there's usually a little overlap within the gobo so itself. On a smaller venue, and obviously has these restrictions on the side. Mm -hmm. You know what, when we do the DMX programming, I'll see if we can get the 350, great. Great. and then we can kind of do show you how to, how to utilize that 350 with the prism and how to give it more of a soft edge. Um, we can add that right on. No problem. Next. Is, is, in Oregon, at least in the areas where I live, has, most people have an outdoor ceremony, and then if they do have an inside, it's usually, the the wine range is very small. Yeah. have huge balls. Right. So, that's what, you know, sometimes shooting it from the back, Four tables back, you know, and for six tables back, you don't really have that far to shoot. Four yeah. small movers now, they have swimming wash capabilities, a nice wash with the fixture, you're not worried about edges, uh, give you a nice color wash, and uh, you have a between what, 20 degree beam angle and 60 degree beam angle. Yeah, these specifically go 14 to 58. Yeah, so if you want huge. like a little dot in the cloud, but you have multiples on there, it looks really good too. Yeah, but yeah, that's you exactly. have the option also to wide fly in the out. Okay. Yeah. Highly recommend this, this style because you have the capability to make it. So one thing I'm going to say, again, if you're going to invest in something like this or a 350, you know, you have your laptop in that bag? Right. Why do you have your laptop in that bag? Because you've made an investment in a laptop, it's easy to carry around, you want to protect it. Right. That's exactly why, you know, that's why we put this together is because if you're making that investment... Well, I probably buy bigger cases that I can find. For yeah. Reason, yeah. Can Especially lasers and everything else. I'm always yep. trying to make sure that Yeah, Pelican cases work great for lasers. Um, but uh, again, that, that CHS 50 is a phenomenal bag. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and actually, um, you can stack fixtures by using those those foam pads with the Velcro. Oh, okay. If you have a fixture and then you put that foam pad over the top, you can put another fixture on there. Um, you really have a lot of a lot of flexibility in that 50. Is it so. possible to buy extra phone pads when you order extra phone pads? Probably in parts. Possibly a parts department. Yeah, you only need like four or five. Yeah, because well, I don't have one right now. I don't know. I know I got to get some of those because I have alternatives. I have to bring my parts by five or six or eight. Yeah. And I have used everything soft that I can possibly do to get them in there. Yep. Yeah. They don't bump around with them. I know it's not just soft. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's worse. <laughs> I said sometimes I think it's worse because some of those plastic bars that they have for structure feels like they just kind of dig into the fixtures. Yeah, so. yeah, and no, I've I've heard a lot of times. Good. Uh, any, anybody else? Questions? California? I have a question for, for Mike. Uh, yeah. I think somebody else had brought it up about the case for Vegas. So I, I just made a rolling part for it. It's not really a protective case. Uh, the way the I, it's, it's a pretty good size uh, unit, so uh, a case for it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's nice to have a case. But I, I need to use a part right now. So, uh, I, would, I would suggest getting a case. It, it's a plastic, uh, it's a pretty thick ABS plastic uh, unit. Um, but I don't have a case. It's, the handle's a little bit awkward. Uh, trying to get you just get your case is just going to be huge for that thing, and I think I have a smaller footprint that I can tuck it away. I would place it. I tuck mine away. I keep it on the rolling cart to have it fits in a good spot in my trailer. And the Nimbus cart is on show special, regular 79, it's on sale for 68, yeah. so. Get one. Yeah. Get, get a cart. If you don't have a cart, get a cart. Yeah. He probably spent more than $68 making yeah. <laughs> make yeah. it. But that's because they didn't have it. I would have more than that in hospital though, so I didn't get They didn't have the cart out when he needed it, so. Knowing Mikey Mike, you know. I'll make that. 
Other questions? No? Well, awesome. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Hopefully you found this week valuable. Um, again, thanks to Chauvet DJ and also IDJ Now for doing a phenomenal job with uh, you know having the product available for all of you. So thanks again, everybody. Have a great rest of the show.